Time for another quick and easy recipe from Food You Believe It. Today we're going to do traditional Irish potato bread, which really couldn't be any more different from the potato bread that any of our American viewers will have had before. In Ireland, we tend to refer to this as potato fudge or potato farl. Just depends on whether you come from the West or whether you come from the North. So this is one of the best and oldest recipes for Irish potato bread. This one is from Irish Farming Life. Really, really simple. We take a pound of uh, already cooked potatoes, which as you can see have been roughly mashed already. Then we take an ounce of, uh, an ounce of self-raising flour and we basically just start to mash uh, our potato through. Now, these old fashioned potato mashers are very, very fine ones. Uh, nowadays, they tend to be referred to as, uh, as potato ricers. It's not really a term I like. I, uh, I much prefer just old fashioned, uh, old fashioned mashers. So we put the mash in there and then push it through into the self-raising flour. Give it a good push. Let's see how that all uh, comes out. So I'll just repeat that again with the rest of the potato and we'll keep going until that pound of potatoes is mashed through. And now we simply mix those together to combine into the dough for our potato bread. And you'll see keeping uh, the potatoes hot or using them when they're still hot, it just makes it much more pliable and it comes together much nicer. If you happen to be using cold leftover potatoes, the easiest way to start combining them is to add a knob of butter, uh, but obviously we don't need to do that today. So I'll just keep mixing this until it forms into a nice uh, ball of dough. Now that it's almost combined, we give it a good sprinkling of salt, uh, probably about half a teaspoon, and keep kneading into the final mix. So with our potatoes, flour and salt all nicely combined into the mix, we simply half that because this will make two rounds of, uh, it'll make two rounds of the potato farl. You'll notice I keep referring to it as farl because that's very much so the traditional Northern Irish term. So we want to get ready to roll that out, in which case we have to make it into a nice, pretty perfect circle um, and then we'll just squish it flat. Now. If you want to use a rolling pin, feel free to do so. However, you will have the scorn of generations of Irish mothers and grandmothers upon you because it was almost frowned upon to, uh, to use a, a rolling pin for your, your potato bread. Um, so that's nicely shaped ball. Look at that, pretty perfect, I should say. Um, and we now just start pushing that down and out. Um, you want it to be about a centimeter thick whenever it gets ready to be cooked. So just keep pressing that and it will form as good a circle as you need. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is Irish cooking, remember. It was very, very rustic and the more rustic and more traditional it is, the better it tastes. We eat with our eyes. So just keep pushing that out until it gets to about a centimeter. Uh, I'll turn that over now. And one final last push. And whilst we like it to be rustic, there needs to be a little element of, uh, needs to be slightly delicate also. So that is looking just about right to me. I don't know why I've got that nursery rhyme, pat a cake, pat a cake. I've got that stuck in my head as I do this. Uh, it's gotta be some flashback to what my granny did, I don't know. So that's, uh, that's just about the size that we wanted. And then time for the final preparation of it, where we basically just cut this in four, in four perfect quarters, and get ready to pop it into a pan. And there you have it. That's the four raw potato breads. Perhaps one of the most important elements of the traditional potato farl recipe is to cook it 
in the fat that your bacon's been cooked in. Now, obviously, uh, for vegetarians or vegans, this isn't gonna work, so you can cook it either in butter or, if you're vegan, in one of the dairy-free uh, spreads that are now available. But I am not vegetarian or, indeed, vegan, so I'm gonna go the traditional way and start cooking the bacon and uh, get that fat nicely rendered to put the potato bread into. Now that that bacon has released some fat, it's given me something to cook with. One of the things that is worth pointing out is uh, I made this one time for friends who don't eat pork for religious reasons, and it works amazingly well with smoked salmon as well. But we're gonna keep going with the bacon today. Just prick your potato foil a number of times, just so that it doesn't capture all the air. Otherwise you'll have a big flute of uh, potato foil and start placing those into the pan. I'd say about a medium heat is perfect for them. Um, so one of the things you may have noticed is that half of the ball of dough is still, uh, it's still there and hasn't been rolled out. I'm only cooking for two people. So what you can do with the other half, wrap it really tightly in cling film, Pop it in the fridge and that'll keep until uh, keep until tomorrow or probably even keep about two or three days. But we're just going to keep cooking these ones in the lovely bacon fat and uh, wait for them to go nice and golden. When dishing the potato farls up, there is one really important thing to remember or one important thing to have at hand. You've got to have a block of Kerrygold. Can't just be any Irish butter. It's got to be Kerrygold. Uh, that's my typical Irish boy bias coming into the fold there. So we'll give these, oh, they look amazing. One last flip. These very much so look like the potato foils from my youth. I'm gonna give them one final rub in the bacon fat. There is a reason that in Northern Ireland, uh, we are known for our uh, not particularly healthy lifestyles, but this is a treat. This is something to do once in a blue moon, normally on a weekend morning. Um, and when you just want that taste of home. So I'm gonna start plating up, got the butter ready, I'm gonna start laying everything out nicely on the plate. So I have just laid all four of those out on my plate. And as I said, time for a good knob of butter over the top of them. And that'll just nicely start to melt. I'm salivating like a Labrador in a sausage factory. That'll start to melt and then simply place uh, your bacon over the top of it uh, and layer it up. And you will have one of the most traditional and most tasty Irish breakfasts. And there you have it, traditional Irish uh, potato farm, potato fudge, potato bread, and cooked bacon, the ultimate weekend treat. Would you believe it? Of course, one last thing worth mentioning, gotta be served with a cup of Barry's tea for the ultimate Irish experience. Enjoy.